हेलो स्टूडेंट सो इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस टाइमिंग एंड कंट्रोल यूनिट सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल ट्राई टू डिस्कस व्हाट इज इंस्ट्रक्शन साइकिल एंड देन वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट हाउ वेरियस इंस्ट्रक्शन विल बी एग्जीक्यूटेड सो लेट एस स्टार्ट अवर टॉपिक दैट इज इंस्ट्रक्शन साइकिल सो लेट मी स्टार्ट डिस्कशन दैट Uh, before starting any discussion uh, of regarding instruction cycle first of all let us try to understand that how many phases are there so instruction will have four phases first phase is fetch okay next phase is decode phase number 3 is calculate effective address of operand if it is memory reference instruction and phase number 4 is execute the instruction yes so whatever instruction it it will, whatever instruction will be executed all the instruction will pass through all these phase so first phase is fetch next phase is decode next is calculate the effective address of operand if it is memory reference instruction and then execute the instruction so if you look at the instruction cycle then uh, instruction cycle will start with uh, sequence setting sequence counter to zero so computer can know that now computer can start with the next instruction now how execution will start so uh, uh, for that uh, the program counter register will be used so whatever starting address of program or the starting address of the first instruction is there it will be stored into the program counter clear with this so program counter will hold the address initial address of uh, program or the first address of the first instruction so let me try to uh, explain you with figure so you can have idea now so the starting address will be stored into address register now if you recall um, common bus architecture or common bus system then uh, uh, we have seen that uh, address register is directly connected with the memory so whatever address or whatever starting address is there it will be stored into the uh, address register so then that address using that address content will be retrieved or instruction will be fetched into the instruction register so what will happen once uh, instruction is fetch or how instruction will be fetch so the starting address is already stored into address register using address register uh, that content that instruction will be fetch into the ir instruction register and then uh, program counter will be incremented so whatever instruction we were supposed to be uh, instruction was supposed to be executed it will be it is already loaded so let me try to draw a memory map so you can have idea that uh, how it will work so um, let's say this is our memory location let's say uh, our program is starting from location uh, let us assume 0 1 2 3 4 and operand is stored on let's say uh, 5 6 and 7 8 9 10 so 
whenever instruction will start what will be the initial value of program counter initial value of program counter will be zero so that instruction uh, will be fetched so as soon as this instruction from location number zero is fetched program counter will immediately shift to the next instruction so the new value of program counter will be one so this instruction which is fetched from the first memory location or location which is pointed by program counter it will be stored into IR. It will be divided into three part as we have discussed previously. This is I means addressing mode. This is opcode and this is uh, 12 bit. So it can be treated as a address or it can be treated as a opcode. So that we will see in instruction cycle. Now this step will be executed at T0. This will be executed at T1. And this will be executed at T2. Now, if you try to recall then T0, T1, T2, it is from control unit. So, which are the timing signal? Mm. So, what will happen at T2? Let us try to understand. So, in T2, we will decode the opcode and we will try to find out that which type of instruction it is. Bit number 0 to 11 means 12 bit will be stored into address register with assumption that uh, it may be used as a address then bit number 15 this will be stored into flag i i means indirect flag okay so there it will be stored and opcode will be decoded here using uh, three cross eight decoder okay so if it is memory reference instruction then we will get output in the range of D0 to D6 and if it is register reference or IR reference then we will check uh, then it will give output in D7. So if I want to find out the type of the instruction then which variable or which output should be checked D7. So then we will go with the value of D7. If value of D7 is 0 okay means we are getting output in range of uh, D0 to D6 then it is memory reference instruction otherwise it is I or register reference instruction. So how we will de uh, determine whether it is register or it is IO so it, at that time we will check the value of I. So if value of I is 1 then it will be considered as a input output instruction and if it is 0 then it will be considered as a register reference instruction so this will be timing signal t3 this will be also t3 this will be t3 this will be t3 now let's see let us assume that output is not getting uh, from d7 we are not getting output from d7 so uh, at that time we will consider it as a memory reference instruction so in case of memory reference instruction this 12 bit will be treated as a address while in case of IO and register reference instruction this 12 bit will be treated as a opcode. So in case of memory reference instruction if value of I is 1 okay so if you try to recall the memory reference instruction let's say here instruction is written like add uh, uh, you can say uh, 2 okay and on location 2 uh, address is uh, 0008 okay so rather than treating this 0008 as an uh, uh, value we will treat this as an address so if addressing mode is indirect addressing mode then in AR we will load the uh, address 0008 008 why because it is 12 bit so this is 12 bit so the this will be the actual address of operand okay if this is 0 okay then in address register there will be 002 only why because this is direct addressing mode so at effective address of operand it is specified in instruction itself so if it is memory reference instruction then uh, one timing signal will be utilized to uh, find out the uh, effective address of operand in, in case it is indirect addressing mode if it is direct then it will be wasted then what will happen after that so at t4 onwards okay uh, memory reference instruction will be executed so it may be possible that uh, after t4 it may extend up to t6 t7 
so that we will see in upcoming uh, video now as you can see at the end of uh, let's say input output instruction register reference instruction and memory reference instruction there is a statement written sequence counter set sequence counter to zero so what is meaning of this after executing an instruction uh, value of sequence counter will be set to zero so this cycle will again start so now it will go with the new value of program counter previously program counter was pointing to at this location now program counter is pointing at location one so now instruction will be fetched uh, fetch from the memory location two uh, memory location number one so then memory location one will be executed then uh, again program counter will be incremented so in next clock cycle it will start execution uh, with the uh, address 3 so likewise so sequence counter will play a very important role in determining whether instruction is over or not okay if value of sequence counter is set to 0 then computer will start with the new cycle so this is how instruction cycle work uh, dear student I would like to request you to watch uh, next video because in next video we will try to combine instruction cycle then uh, micro program control uh, sorry timing and control unit of basic computer and uh, uh, stored program organization as well as uh, common bus system so we will merge all these four concept and then we will try to understand that how all this uh, component individual component work combinedly and it help us to execute the instruction so that is sufficient for today thank you